Welcome back to the Maritime Lemonade Stand. I'm Eric S. Queen, back from Miami and Florida Keys, a, a much-needed break. So I got back here to the boat, to Odyssey, feeling good. And then I woke up the next morning to a gorgeous sunrise, and I began to feel real good. And you might be like, well, well besides the sunrise, why are you feeling real good? Well, remember the diesel that wouldn't start? Huh? Get you some. How about the sail that wouldn't fit the mast? Well, check it. And that old piece of rotten wood that was my bow sprit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to the brand new, gorgeous, super strong, most powerful bow sprit, complete with two of the nastiest and most terrible anchors so I could sleep at night. We call that cheap insurance. And oh, hey, what's that white thing up there on the top? You know what that is? It's Captain Queen's cocktail chair. That's right, I decided to forego two weeks of, of eating so I could have a little spot to sit back and slurp on some adult sodas and watch my little boat float herself. So I'm um, super happy, super psyched, rebirth, boat is almost ready. There are a few, you know, kind of smaller things to do on the boat, but you know, in probably in about two, three weeks, I uh, will be sailing away from here, which is gonna be great. But, um, you know, while it wasn't sailable yet, I could motor on it. And I think a lot of people, if you're just now joining the show, assume that I've at least been on my boat. I've never been on this boat. It's been tied up here to the dock. That is my extent of aquatic adventure with Odyssey. So I said, you know what? I woke up one day, it was gorgeous. I'm gonna motor to the local coffee shop. It's like a mile and a half away, but whatever. I'm gonna take my boat out. So when I say C, you say trial. C works better in bigger sporting events, but whatever, I was excited out of Whitaker Creek, fast all boats tied up like jerks, took a hard ride out into the open water, and I got stuck. Yep, I was uh, I was I was moving one second and then I stopped moving the next, wasn't paying attention to my depth sounder, ten minutes into my maiden voyage, sea trial number one, and I'm stuck and you just you just have to laugh, you know, if you remember what my friend Ryan said last week, you just I just laughed. You know, it was it was cursing and laughing, but it's, it was just one of those things. It's like, here we go, this is an adventure. I don't know what I'm supposed to do except call the tow company. The guys came and I was just, I was so embarrassed. I was like, please don't tell everybody in town because it's a very small town and I'm brand new and I'm trying to be a cool guy. And he was like, look, man, there are three types of boaters. There are people that uh, have run aground. There are people that have never run aground. And there are people that have lied about never running aground. It's just a normal part of sailing. So I felt better. They towed me off. I was on my way parallel to the same little road every day that I ride my bicycle. This time I was in my boat to the local coffee shop. 30 minutes later, I, I pulled into the town dock and was able to set my feet firmly on, on terra firma. You know, that long at sea will 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 change a man. And uh, I, I went through that. It was, it was a gorgeous thing. Uh, and then I just spent the rest of the day tied up to the dock, watching all the people outside, walking up to my boat, looking at it, which was a really cool thing. I mean, I, I people thought my boat was pretty and beautiful and for the first time she moved from the boatyard where she's been for for a year and a half and so it was it was wonderful and I sat there and I had a few beers on the deck and you know it was just this gorgeous sunset with all the colors and silhouettes and then oh my god what is that coming towards us it was a big black cloud of doom and destruction 40 mile an hour winds that night huge thunderstorm huge electric uh, lightning stuff Okay, and I'm sitting here going, I just wanted a nice evening on my boat, forgetting that I still have holes on the top of my boat. Remember I said that we have a few more things connecting the electrics from the mast, so water was coming in. I didn't know what to do because I didn't have any sailing hole tape or whatever. And so on the top of the on the top of the hole, I put a book and a plate, and underneath it I just taped band-aids because apparently uh, that's supposed to work. So whatever, terrible night, didn't sleep, but I woke up. Got, uh, got a cup of coffee, motored back, wind on the nose, super cold, like I just wanted to get the mile and a half back to the boatyard. Uh, so I finally did it and I tied up and there was this old salty dog, you know, hanging around the docks. He must have been in their boatyard for 80 years and I was telling my very horrific story about motoring a mile to get a latte. And uh, he said, uh, had a tough time. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. I'm a little bit shaken up. He goes, your boat sink. No, my, my, my boat didn't sink. He goes, did you die? He goes, no, I didn't die. He goes, well, I guess it was a successful trip. 
All right, I guess, I guess it was a hey, sea trial number one. We're good, but um, that little forty minutes did get me thinking. I mean, I'll, I've been thinking about the boat the whole time. Well, what about weather? I haven't really paid much attention to the weather, and so I started to freak out and buy another thirty books on weather until I remembered, oh. One of my very best friends in the entire world happens to be Florida's number one, most handsome, most desirable, most successful weatherman, Jim Van Fleet. Leave it to one of my best friends in the world to ask me, with two weeks left to go in the hurricane season, a six-month season, mind you, how the rest of the year looks. Okay, Eric with an A. Here we go. Since you asked me about hurricane season with about two weeks left to go, I uh, didn't want you asking about the winter outlook in April. The jet stream drives weather and it moving over the Gulf Coast, South Texas, Louisiana, Central Florida, that historically has been some of our biggest severe weather outbreaks where we've had long track tornadoes and a lot of really dangerous weather in the middle of the night in January, February, March. So better off holding up in North Carolina then in the springtime, come down to Florida and come see me. Some of the bigger years we've had, 1998. You remember 98, Eric, don't you? I think that's when you lived with me for about six months. Never paid rent. Dude. Ate all my food. Wait, that wasn't... You didn't even have the bear rug. You do one naked calendar, lying on a bear rug, and everybody wants to talk about it. Jim, I'm trying to sail around the world selling lemonade, and you getting hung up on sexual semantics the weather man so bottom line maybe one more name storm and stay in the carolinas until the winter's over with then bring your boat back down to warmer waters and live on margarita time with me i still think i have your leather pants somewhere i don't know why but it was it was the 90s all right love you bubba see you down here in springtime i'm gonna save to boat this way first round's on me probably the rest of them too Anyway, I heard margaritas and wait here for three weeks, right? Is that what you got from that? Good. That's what I got from that. Uh, actually works out good because, you know, if you remember my, my best friend Don, he has a, a beautiful 47-foot boat that he, he circumnavigated with. Uh, he decided I need some serious offshore experience. So he and I are actually going to take his boat tomorrow morning from here in North Carolina um, down to Florida. So it'll be kind of four days nonstop, and I'm going to get to learn a lot. So uh, it's, it's all coming together like like the date of leaving here is very very soon and it, it's exciting and i appreciate you just kind of hanging out uh while i go through this i know it's supposed to be a sailing trip but again i, I wanted to show you the whole thing and and this is it you know we got to spend a little while at a boatyard we'll talk to you more from florida so we made it to Ball Street in Key West. It's Fantasy Fest 2015. Uh, do not point the camera that way. That's the area where you can express yourself. I guess is the nicest way. How do I describe it? It's uh, it's Mardi Gras meets Halloween. It's sponsored by Cialis. 